Matt. I'm Kerry. We are the Stagmar Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. Our work can be seen on film, Broadway, and at Renaissance festivals around the country. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. After reading through all the comments, the most requested blade by far has been Squall's Gunblade from Final Fantasy VIII. Here we have a 3D rendering. I got one on the top here that has all our dimensioning figured out. I'm gonna go ahead and use the one on the bottom and trace our profile and prepare it for CNC cutting on the plasma. We're actually gonna add the hammer in later as a functioning hammer, so I'm gonna just skip right around that. Just like the hammer, I'm gonna leave the trigger out so we can add that as a functioning piece later. So there we go. After Matt finalizes the design, we have John, using the CNC plasma table, cut out the frame and the blade in chromoly steel. The way our plasma cutter works is it flows high compressed air through the nozzle and strikes an arc. That arc then turns the air into a plasma beam that pierces a metal. John uses the Bader sanders to deburr the blade. We have to have a reasonably fine finish so that when the engraving is cut on the CNC mill, we don't have to sand it deeply to smooth it again. It's now my turn to lay out the engraving for the Griever. It's basically a winged lion, pretty classic symbol from Final Fantasy VIII. It's a little bit different when drawing something that's gonna be cut on a mill instead of being cut on the plasma cutter. We really have to get all the undercuts and everything on the inside as well. Using the retrofit bridge port, we engrave the griever on the side of the blade. We'll be cutting the engraving 15 thousandths deep, 5 thousandths per pass. All right, we got our gun blade back from engraving. We got the griever on there, which I think turned out really nice. Next step is to lay on our edge bevel and then uh, it's ready for heat treat. We use the long forge for heat treating the Final Fantasy gun blade. We've already taken a quick hardening over the frame area. The blade's going to be a different hardness. We're going to have to protect the griever engraving. We're going to protect that uh, by melting some soap on it. The soap's going to keep the oxygen off the surface. And then we're going to go into the forge again and heat on the blade side. So the reason that we heat treat the blade is to make it harder so it'll hold an edge and also to make it considerably stronger. Our target temperature is about 1,550 degrees. We're gonna take it out, we're gonna quench it into the oil for hardening. So from here, I can hand it off to Matt to polish. We set an indexer up on the Gorton milling machine to drill the cylinder. We're just gonna start with a center drill, and then we'll come back through, drill them up to size, run a mill down for our final sizing, and then we'll probably come back and cut in a shoulder for the shells. The cylinder is actually a little bit under three inches. We have four and a half inches here. So we're gonna over drill it, and then we're gonna go back up on the lathe, and we're gonna cut the piece to shape so that it actually fits in the gun. That'll expose the back side of the drilling for the chambers. What we're going to do now is we're going to cut a shoulder in so that when we make a faux cartridge to go into that, it'll have a shoulder to sit on. It'll be pretty much identical you do for a, for a real firearm. We lay the indexing head over so that it can cut horizontally. This is so we can flute the cylinder. John cuts additional sections of the frame for me to add to the gun section. Just adding some clamps so that I've got a fairly flush surface before I do any welding. And this will get welded on this side and it'll reinforce the whole piece and then it'll get blended out to match so that it looks like it's all one piece. For the external welds, I'm using a MIG welder. For the internal welds, I'll use a TIG so we have less cleanup. We're going to take it over to one of the baiters with some rough grit on it to take off the high weld. So you can see now where the weld was, it's essentially become one piece. So now that we know the size of the frame, we're going to take the cylinder and cut it down 
to 2.7575 inches. We're gonna do a final filing to get the frame to fit exactly right, but this is gonna get us really close. I take the cylinder to the Bader sander, working on the contact wheel and the slack belt on two different grits, both 180 and 240 grit, to clean up and polish out the cylinder. To complete the fit and make sure the cylinder will turn, I use a hand file to cut in the corners and shave the edges clean. Even though we're not making a firing replica, we wanted to make sure that visually this would be the same as it is in the game. Since you can see the cartridges in the game, we turn them on the lathe. The wax pendant is placed inside of a flask. The flask is then filled with a plaster that we call investment. It has silica in it that allows the high temperature and the air to pass through it when we put it in the vacuum unit. Once it's done doing its boiling and getting the air out of it, we're gonna let these sit um, for at least four hours till they set up and then they get put in a kiln and burnt out overnight. Um, so all the wax will come out of it and everything, and then tomorrow morning we can cast. It needs to be there for at least eight hours at 1,800 degrees, and then we bring it back down to around uh, 950. With the kiln at 950 and the bronze at 2,100 degrees, we are prepared to pour the griever pendant. Once we can visibly see that the bronze is no longer glowing, we quench the flask to reveal the griever pendant. After measuring off a preliminary set, I recut the trigger and the hammer so they'll fit the gun blade. Using the Gorton milling machine and a ball end cutter, I relieve the frame for the cylinder pin. All right, we got our Squall's gun blade almost all done. All we gotta do is attach the wood uh, slabs for the handle, get this outer piece a little tigged on. Uh, Carrie's got it all machined out in the inside for the trigger and the hammer. Gotta attach that. Polish her up, and we're ready to battle. Click here to subscribe, or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want to see the guys build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next. Special thanks to our friends at Zombie Go Boom.